right now with him. You know, welcome back, True to Horse Horsemanship. Today, what we got here is a 12-year-old. As he's only supposed to been here for two weeks, but he stayed a little bit longer. And what I'm going to point out a lot in this video, number one, he'll be here three weeks, and all I've done with this horse is scratch the surface. Part time, you got to listen to what the owner said, and everything I'm saying, I've said to the owner. So, you know, I'm not saying anything I haven't said to him already. One factor, what I found out, because you got to be part detective and everything else. I noticed Billy Bob here, that's his name, didn't like nothing behind him. And talking to the owner, he's got a little pooping blue healer that would while they're running around would jump up and grab the horse from behind all the time so, and also what I just found out because I kept asking Joe because there's a little something telling me something's not completely on the up and up and then finally he owned up he sent this horse to a so-called trainer who charged him two hundred dollars for a month training fee right there run away like hell somebody said they're going to charge you two hundred dollars for a month fee run don't walk and i know what he did all he did was try to get on just ride this horse way at the beginning so there was never a foundation so you add that to a horse that's already skittish because of a dog getting to that two hundred dollar trainer who ended up was a rodeo bronc rider so all he did with his horse is just ride the buck out of him you know a lot of these horses especially with this horse's previous history you cannot get by with that you people who tries to push these horses that hard yeah you can have seven out of ten that'll be all right but then three out of that ten you're going to make a nervous wreck and I've, you've seen them on the videos and it takes months and months to get these horses over it not just three weeks so Billy Bob here within I'd say five minutes I have him in a round pen even if he's just standing here like he is right now he'd be broke out in a nervous sweat Matter of fact, Joe, all he wanted me to do was ride the horse, ride the horse. I'll come to my horse. It's like this horse, last thing, and I've said this to Joe, last thing this horse needed when he first got here was cantered. He has so many damn holes, it was pathetic. Because if I took my rope and flipped it over his back like that, he's spooking all over the place. So if I cannot throw my rope across a horse's back like that, why am I going to throw a leg over the horse? And plus the horse was ringing wet and never sweat. And it took close to two weeks of working him, and he was getting work sometimes twice a day to get him finally to relax enough. He was so screwed up, there was no sense riding him. If I rode him, he would not be standing here and we still got some mountain problems and all and all I could do is show Joe how to handle it but primarily it's because of the way he's been handled and when you handle these horses especially a horse like him everything how you approach this horse matters I'm not going to do it to him because to me it's not fair. But I had the owner saddle this horse up, so we're going to make believe. So he he got this girth here that was loose, and he just boom jerked it real hard. Boom jerked it real hard. So you're going to make a nervous horse right there. Showed you. You're going to make it that much nervous. And I told him, said, Joe, don't do it like that. And plus, he over-tightened the same scenario. He over-tightened that girth. Because he was really girthy. He's a lot better. He's still a little bit sensory. But something like that is going to take him a long time to get over it. And where that stemmed from? That stemmed from this probably a young kid who rode buck and stock tighten the saddle on to make damn sure that saddle didn't move didn't give a damn about this horse because if he did 
he it wouldn't be the horse had been already fixed a long time ago and tighten that over tighten that girth so the saddle stayed in place when Billy Bob here started bucking so what did he do he created a girthy horse and the way Joe tightens it down you got two factors nobody is ever looking out this horse my statement to him one day was this horse is my client you are the one who's hauling this horse around but this horse is my client not you of course I got a look from him but it's the truth because Billy, this horse is a nice horse and I hate calling Billy Bob because I hate that name but this horse is a nice horse and the owner stays with it and does everything I tell him it's going to be quick but the scenario is you know he wants canter canter this horse canter this horse this horse you know needs to relax hell with canter in this horse he needs to walk trot jog and once you got all that then worry about canter this horse because you're dealing with a nervous horse so right now all I'm doing is moving his feet a little bit and my working with him last few weeks this is where we start out at first he was a little he didn't just reverse I started out on the rail get him go back and forth and I wasn't using all this groundwork to wear him down I was using this groundwork to make him think and stop start looking at where I'm at paying attention to me because that first day his head was everywhere his eye wasn't looking at me but instead of running him around for an hour or so get him looking to me you know I'll just do a refresher I use my rail like you see me do on a evaluation horse I use that rail to turn him because a horse like this he's already a nervous horse so I got to really pay attention on how I approach him because I want to keep him you know calm and relax and like right there some people really get after him he's trying to change the other direction on me no I'm just gonna get in reverse him and pay attention I'll start driving him at the hip pick up my hand if I want him to go forward I point him go forward then I'll pick up my other hand I'll point the other way we reverse I'll pick up again point that way and we go that way that's good and when I first start him you know a lot of people do things because they don't know they're not being cruel or nothing but when I first started him Lord mercy if I picked up this whip he would be dancing all over the place so what I would do had to start because a whip is only an extension of my arm that's all they are they're not a punishment and I'm not going to go out in the pasture and say go boy go So the only time I use my whip, I want him to go forward, bam. And I leave him alone. I'm going to switch hands, put him in front. But I leave him alone.
Now, what I make sure I do after I use my whip as a tool, I make darn sure I go back and make sure he stands here while I can do this. This is the way we start, and if I'm using my lunge whip, this is where we finish. Yeah, I mean, this episode is going to be more on preaching than anything, I'm afraid. And I'd rather it wasn't. But it needs to be brought out. You know, for other horses like him that's here. He's not here long enough for me to come up with a bar name with him. So, And like I said, I hate that name. <coughs> There we go. So that's basically what I did for that first week. It was just what I did the last few minutes was that. I had to get that horse relaxed a little bit, focus on me, but not have him wore down focus on me. I want him to be able to do it right at the beginning and not nervous saying like I said it's going to be a long one actually you know my first time was just and he was really stiff at the bit and everything uh, owner said he did ground drive him which that doesn't help the horse being stiff if you ground drive him a certain way you're actually going to make the horse stiff and you don't teach him to flex so we had to do that. He, so we're just spending, right now all I'm doing is spending some time with him. I don't get in a hurry with a horse like this. With anything, there's a more in a hurry. Now if let's say this horse was here for training for a while, at some point I would start Amping it up a little bit. So one of the problems we came into was mountain. More so when the owner mounted than me. So all I'm gonna do here. I'm going to use my short whip. And when I, when I, how I started that, and if I have to, I go to my long whip, and I just tap, tap, tap until he comes over this way. And at first, you know, he'll, he'll move away from it. So I just take my whip and reposition him. He gets... Moves around a little bit. I'm not going to sit here and start jerking on him for him to stop moving. All I'm going to do is bring him back. Then we're going to pet. I'm going to pet. And it's important, just like I said earlier with the lunge whip, with my dress, long dressage whip, I mean, yeah, dressage whip here, that I just don't tap him and not pet him with it. Because I want him to feel it. Like I said, this is just my tool. And so he's standing here real good. I might pick up my foot, pick up my foot. Basically, what I've had to do with this horse is fill out that foundation with cracks. And I tell you what, it's hard to do it if, if you don't do this at the beginning. I mean, that's why you take, like, Suka, little one, 
great eagle. They, my, our horses, they got a good foundation, so they can sit for a long time, and we can ride them. We don't have to lunge them. We don't have to do squat. So I'm going to just put my, get up here because, like I said, he's got a habit of moving off. So he's standing here fine. So what I will do, I picked up my hand, pointed. I'm going to pick up the hand again, point. Then I'm going to bring him in. Right there, he pretty well positioned himself. And that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to still pet him with that, because if you watch the first part time I started to pet him, he got nervous. Because like I said, he's worried about things on his butt end. So what am I petting his butt in? I mean, it just took a, a little short time. It hasn't been that long. He finally feels halfway comfortable somebody walking behind him. So move him away from again. Good boy. So now we pick up a foot. Like I said, I'm not in a hurry. He moves off. I'm gonna move his feet a little bit. And I don't have to do it that much. Then we'll reposition them over here. Yeah. Well, that's like the owner. I've had to jump on him because he wanted to yell at him or jerk on him one time. And I said, no, Joe, you don't do that. There we go. Good boy. So, you know, we're just going to walk off here. I'm going to pick up his nose. You know, I'm using my little Argentine bit because I got by, I got lateral control on him. I'm going to pick up his nose. When I first got on him, he wouldn't <laughs> steer where the hoop. I'm going to grab his face a little bit, put my feet forward, ask for a stop, I'm going to ride backwards, and that was another thing. And like I said, i got to get a DVD tomorrow, give Joe a copy of this. When I asked this horse to back, Joe got on him, first thing he did, he started jerking the hell out of the reins to get a horse back. The horse didn't back, so he's jerking again. Horse didn't back, he's jerking again. And I yelled at him, said, no, you don't do that. Your hands basically are just to set his head. That's it. So all we're gonna do is walk around here. We might do a one rein stop, which is what I wanna bring up. One rain stop. Always school at home before you do it. And I hear people say, well, my horse just moves around and around and around. Yes, at first they will move it around and around and around. So I keep my legs off of them. I pull to my center line so I get away from that shoulder. And once they stop and I get softness, then I release. So you people that you know, 
Hey, if you show us one rain stop, they're not going to tell you that horse might move out. So I'm going to take my legs off. I'm going to pick up my center line. I'm not going to jerk. I'm just going to hold my hand steady. Might just lift up a little bit to get a little bit more weight in that shoulder. But on my outside rein, I give it back to him. If I pull on this side, I got to give the other. And for a while, you know, this, this is what this horse needs. And he needs a lot of it. This, if, man, this, he's got to go home to see. And this is what I'm going to recommend to Joe. And I've already recommended Joe. Just do this. Don't worry about cantering. Don't worry about walking. I mean, yeah, cantering. Because what's going to happen in time, because it's already helped a lot. But what he's going to learn, if I pick up that nose, if I do all my homework correctly, if I touch that bit, that's going to be his cue to relax. But people don't do this long enough to get that point across. So, you know, some theories out there, like if him want to move around, they'll move that hip. Say, move that hip, move that hip, and then release. I'm dealing with a nervous horse. So if I start putting too much pressure on him, it's going to explode. So if I can take my time, and as I say, one step at a time. Who? So, you know, I'm going to... And right now, I'm not worried about him being on the rail. And my job here is just getting him to relax, 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 relax. So even at a trot there, I'll pick up and I'll slowly shut him down. I slowly shut him down. And I put my I'm bending him to the left, so I might put my right hand on his withers to help keep my balance. Now, if I have to, I might pick up my his nose just a little bit. But the important part is, when you're doing a one rein stop, don't pull to the outside because you're not getting away at the shoulder. If I pulled to the outside, like this, he can walk, well he done did it, right there, he's walking all over. But if I move my hand to the center, I'm getting away in the shoulder and I'm shutting him down. So, you know, I won't just stay on one thing with him. You know, I might do, try him out here. Do a couple rollbacks, push them out. Roll back, push them out. Roll back, push them out. Roll back, right forward. Push them out, right forward. Oh. And right there, I just use the extended trot to get him to know when I ask for a stop. You know, your trot and your extended trot, especially if nobody wants to sit it, is a good training tool. It's fast enough, you get in their head like that stop right there. I want him to learn to stop quickly, but it's slow enough for my mistakes 
the smaller. Oh! And that's why I said, and we gotta go over this again right there. Now he's worked up a little bit. So instead of keep, keep pulling, I'm gonna flex them, bend them. I pick that nose up a little bit. He calms down some somewhat, then I'll walk him out. I like him. He's to the point that I can play with his mouth right there. See, I'm putting that head that low. I'm asking for it that low. But unfortunately, he's going home Tuesday, so this is it. So, you know, and all I'm doing where I want to set that head at, I'm going to put some pressure on it. Of course, now he's going to do what he's supposed to do. Bam, there we go. And he's right, right. He's right where he's. I want that head to go. I'm going to push. Uh, horse's natural tendency is to push. So do it while I'm moving. So I'm going to hold him right there. He pushed right there, and I let go. He pushed right. I'm going to. Grab him, he pushed right there I'm on a go. But what you want to do, you don't want to do that until I can do this and back him up or ride forward in that frame he's in right now. He's now pushing on the bit. I can hold my hand steady. So that's you know. And like him with Joe, I just got to bring it up so I can remind him. He was over here and the horse started backing up. And Joe did the typical thing. You know, let's go forward stuff. And I told him, you have people out there, if you get a horse that wants to back up on you, it's easy. Don't try to boot them forward. When you turn these horses... To them, their feet are moving forward. In other words, if I turn this, his feet's moving forward. So what I'm gonna do, he's backing up. So I'm gonna turn, his feet's moving forward. So then I'm gonna ride forward. He starts backing up, I'll pick up. Then I'm gonna ride forward. While he's moving, I'm not gonna let him stop. And when they start backing up on you and no horse is going to do it, don't wait till they back up two or three strides and boot them, boot them. They're not going forward. As soon as you feel that horse rock back, pick up and turn them. Oh, Billy Bob here. He's a nice little horse. I like him. He, he's got a lot of potential for being a big horse and everything. I mean, he's got tons of potential. I mean, he can get under himself real well. And, uh, you know, the key thing is, number one, I'll go over everything, especially a horse like Billy Bob. The key thing is get him to relax. Not run him into the ground to get him relaxed, because you're not getting relaxed. That way you're just tiring him out. So next time you're not going to make no progress, you're just going to have to run him longer and longer. And like uh, I wish I had to be able to flirt when he first came in here. Because I'm not exaggerating. That first time, we're, we're, we're not in here three minutes and he's not doing anything. He's broken out in lather. But now, you know, it's cool today. But I really got to work him now to get a sweat up. So that's what I'm looking for. So take your time. Do not miss a step. Like I said earlier, you can't throw a rope over the horse's back. Or, of, to me, I would have used it with him, but he's not going to be here long enough. Plastic bag on a lunge whip. If you can't throw that over the horse's back, don't throw a leg over the horse's back. It's that simple. I don't give a dang how well he's taking that saddle. If you cannot do that, 
and especially when his feet feet's moving because you'll I don't think I've ever really showed it and I probably have on one but I'll have it moving and I'll put my plastic bag over the back but I don't want them to react I mean when I get that that's where I know I'm making headway when their feet are moving uh, and so really take your time take one step and you know basically it is to train most of your horses but unfortunately and you've seen some on the videos here and horses like Billy Bob if I got a hold of him at the get-go and take that darn dog out of the equation and work with Joe and had especially a two solid months on him this horse would be phenomenal he'd be he'd be so far ahead of the game because he's got a lot of try in him he, he he wants to please and he's smart and now he's he's starting to show more of his personality because he's getting more given to me but you know it is what it is and Key thing, and you know, I've seen people scared to death of a horse, and they're trying to start it. You're you're doomed to fail. You'll never ride that horse. You'll never be able to handle that horse if you're scared to death of it, because that horse is going to smell you, because and they'll sense it. Because what happens is when we get scared, we put out a certain our body puts out a certain chemical. They smell that chemical because that's their life preservation and they say oh shit you're scared so I'm gonna have to be scared so you'll never be able to and I don't care unless you can change your mind that person changed the mindset they'll never be able to do it I mean so just take one step at a time and if you're looking for a trainer if they say $200 uh, don't like say run and if they say well you just need to ride your horse if they never seen your horse how they know they just gonna ride their horse like I said with this one that's what I want to try to say with him he needed his foundation unfortunately that's why I had to go we just sent a horse home she's been here Denise been in and out with other horses last couple of years and she had one week in a week's time this horse made phenomenal progress but the horse different mindset it was an Arab but still different mindset he hasn't had life experiences this horse has because I got to be half detective I gotta keep digging and digging and digging and slowly it all comes out and I gotta watch the owners so my job is not to put down the owners or not say because Joe's a good person but he needs to know that this horse needs to just chill out. He can't yell. He can't scream. He can't jerk. He can't do this because it'll never it'll never work. It will never work for him and the owner if they do that. So, any questions out there? In other words, Mass and Cindy, because she always comes up with questions. I hope y'all get a lot cause, because if I can save. A horse to get more relaxed and you as a horse owner to stop think and tell yourself I need to chill horses live in a moment so let's say he does move when I'm trying to mount him by the time I step off that mountain block or by the time I, if I wasn't mounting from a mountain block or mounting from the ground by the time I got in there to react to get after this horse it's too late. The horse is like, what the heck are you doing to me? And this horse is already a nervous horse, so you're just going to compound it. So what you do, just like what I did, he tried to move, I just moved his feet back and forth, right then and there. And then after that, I moved his feet, took over, and I moved his feet a little bit. I didn't have to run him hard, just a little bit, and I'll bring him over. A little bit and bring him over. Because what's going to happen, and I hope the owner keeps goes up with that because you know us older people we like to find places to mount in the woods or wherever and if he really works on this this horse 
he'll just set them anywhere to log the horse to get up to him. If he's ever above this horse, still the horse wanting to get away from him, he's going to go right to him. So there is benefits from it. So with all that said, hope everybody has had a nice Thanksgiving. And depends on the weather now, if we have one before now on Christmas. If not, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, but we hope we'll have a video by then. So as I always say, be true to horse, and they'll definitely be true to you. First and foremost, be true to yourself. To my kids, grandkids, and a special person out there, watch Daylight Lake. Katie, God bless, take care.